We have a very interesting topic here. So our goal is to have you understand why you want to mark to market. So this is a talk related to stock traders, day traders, people who are into online trading and make money, lose money, and you're interested in this topic. My first book, Appointment with the Yin at 8 a.m. Now the audio version is out. So this is the link to the audio version. The way to go to this audio version is just go to Audible, A-U-D-I-B-L-E dot com, audible.com. Then you just type into the title, Appointment with Yin at 8 a.m. Then you will come into this screen. And right now, for three months, they give you that audio for free. Just listen to that within this three months. It's free. Then after that, and um, you know, you already got your version of the audio book. We have English version. We also have Spanish version, Satacon Ying at 8 a.m. So both are, um, you know, of course, the Spanish one was translated. The English one is the one I wrote. So you can come in to get the free version of our my, my book. And I just want to make that announcement here. All right, now let's go with our webinars today. And I will start sharing the screen immediately. Should I elect mark to market? And no responsibility disclaimer. And this is just to tell you that whatever you learn on the internet, and i rather you take all of these uh, internet um, input you got as an entertainment. It just, it just because when it comes to you seriously, you need to engage professionals to help you. But I really give you a lot more knowledge and to enable you to do it yourself. And we don't do webinars and you know do a bunch of advertising then tell you you can do this, but don't tell you how to do it. That's just not our style. It is not communitycpa.com style. We we really we don't have enough people in our firm to serve all the needs that's up there. So we hope that through our webinar and you listen to our webinar and you go onto our website, you liked our videos and you learn. And when you learn, all I want from you is to give us positive comments on social media whatever media format you use. And if go there, just give us a plus. Tell people that we are good and we know what we're talking about. And with this mark to market, I knew our firm is leading the trend. If you search mark to market, you will see our firm's video all over the place. But this is the area that the smart taxpayers are doing smart things. And online trading, it just is the next way of living, folks. And you cannot deny our, our, our way of making money is different now. And how many people would ask for questions like mark to market five years ago? I probably will tell you maybe one or two in the year. That's the most. But now how many people? Now I would not exaggerate. I probably get this very question. Should I elect mark to market? That very question weekly. So this is why we're here. So now let's just briefly talk and I have something I prepared for you today. You will love me for that because I give you example, make you understand it. So no more big words, no more terms, just understand by numbers. So what is mark to market? Mark to market is actually something invented in 1993 and enhanced in 1997. With the internet, it's becoming much more known to taxpayers. Basically, it says that you will, you will evaluate, you will evaluate your stock at the end of the year, whether that's December 31st is your year or June 30th is your year, whichever years you have. At the end of the year, mark your stock as if you sold it. So if you have a stock and you bought, but you didn't sell on December 31st, 2021, if you have a mark-to-market put in place, the book, 
at the brokerage firm treated you as if you sold it. So it depends on that day, what price the market give you. You could end up with a big income. The next day, the price will drop. Then you will be like, where is my income? But my taxes is here. So that's the danger of mark to market. I will elaborate that more, okay? So section 475F, this is where that it come to a very good reason for a lot of people wanting to do mark to market. Because if you don't do mark to market, you are an investor. And in the losses you have in, this, in your market, like the wash sale denied losses, right? I have client with over million point five wash sale losses that denied. They cannot claim the losses. The most they can claim is how much on loss? Only 3,000. And the wash sale losses is not even coming in. The wash sale losses is not even this 3,000. The 3,000 is a real loss. You can only deduct 3,000 because you are an investor. But if you select the market to market, you will treat that loss as an ordinary loss. So there will be no more limitation on 3,000. So this is where section 475F is all about. Allows traders to recognize value of the security as if they were sold for their fair market value on the last day of the year and subtract your original basis in the stock from the fair market value on that last business day of the year and the report result as your gain and loss, ordinary gain and loss. Now, come to this really meaningful illustration. And what does that mean? Let's understand wash sales. Let's understand mark to market. I'll give you an example. Now, wash sales. So, I am going to show you, and I want you to snap a picture of this slide right now, and if you can, okay? And then I want you to snap another picture for the next slides. And then I will switch screen and we start to draw because that is the way for you to understand the difference between wash sales and the mark to market. So you got the wash sales, okay? This is the slides very important. The next one is mark to market. I want you to snap a picture of this one. And these two slides are the examples I am giving you. And this just written in words, but I want to draw that for you and in the next half minute. So take a picture of that and take a picture of mark to market example. Now, let's go to our drawing board. I have this beautiful drawing board, is white color. White color is the most beautiful color, don't you think? Allow us to do whatever we want. Okay, so now let's start. So wash sales. And the people are very scared of wash sales because they see that as a total loss. So let's give an example. In January, on January 1st, 2021, you have an ABC stock, one stock for $10. You bought that $10. And um, March 1st come, 2021, ABC stock, one stock you have. And the value went down to four. So you decided sell it. When you did that, what do you have right here? You created, you created a six dollar what loss. And in this case, because we are investor, right? Because we have we classify ourselves as an investor, and so this is my. This is my loss, it's a capital loss. If I stop right here, I file taxes, then I have $6 capital loss, I can deduct because the maximum was 3,000. So I have $6, I can deduct. 
that six dollar will offset your W two, offset your other income just as normal. Now, but you are not just an investor; you are a little bit more involved. So on March tenth, and ABC stock start to come back, and you bought it back. At seven dollar per share, you bought it back. Now, because you bought it back within thirty days, okay, you created a wash sale loss right here. So you bought it back within thirty days, and you created a wash sale loss. How much? The loss you had between ten dollars and the four dollars is disallowed because you bought the same stock back within thirty days. You sold it. So we have a six dollar loss right here. So that six dollar become your wash sale loss. And remember, when you look at your statement, there is a whole column of your wash sale losses that disallowed. That's because you actually bought it back, bought the substantially the same stock back within thirty days. The loss is regarded as a wash sale loss. You cannot deduct this loss. So let's say now you're filing tax return, and you bought it back within thirty days. December come, you file tax return. So your statement would come out to say that what sale lost six dollars. Can you deduct that? No, you cannot. So this will become oh well, I lost my I I didn't have any gain and didn't have any loss because I bought it back and loss was denied. Yes, that's correct. So that's where people are looking at the six dollars and are feeling very sad. However, the six dollar loss you were disallowed that increase your stock basis. Remember, you said you bought at seven dollars. So your stock basis at March tenth, twenty twenty one, equals to what? Equals to this seven dollars plus the six. So you got a thirteen dollar basis. What does base mean? Base means just that what you put in. What was your cost base? What what was your um 本钱 in Chinese we call that 本钱 right? 你的本钱是什么东西 right? Now let's say on December thirty first. 2021, 2021, and you sold it. Sold one share for twenty dollars. So, what is your capital gain, folks? Tell me. Twenty dollars, you sold price minus your basis. So, your capital gain is what? Seven dollars. Without wash sales, what would be your capital gain? Without wash sales, you would take the twenty dollars minus seven because that's what you bought for. So you would have capital gain of thirteen, but you only had capital gain of seven. So now, when you file tax at the end of the year, and your ten ninety nine B actually would have the wash sale denied six. But also will tell you your capital gain is seven. So this is about our wash sales. So you see, someone was telling me that oh Ying, I don't want wash sales because they actually I totally cannot deduct it. I lost it. You didn't lose it. You you will recoup that when you sell that stock hundred percent. If you don't sell this stock, of course. You're not gonna claim that six dollars because it went into the base for you, 
But if you sold that stock empty, you just sold it, it will come out, save your taxes right here. And you actually did take advantage of that, just different timing. Okay, now let's talk about mark to market. So let's pretend I have the same stock. I am mark to market. So in this, in this one, let me change my change my uh, writing into red. So we're gonna do mark to market. So everything in red right now represents mark to market. Now, January the 1st, 2021. And mark to market, ABC one stock, $10. No problem. And March 1st, went down to $4. I sold it. So what does that mean? In mark to market world, very simple. It is $10 minus $4. So you had a $6 loss. What loss? Is ordinary? Ordinary business loss. Then you will ask me, oh, what's the difference between the other loss you were saying right here, capital loss? The difference is in this mark to market world, this loss, has no limitation. You don't have to limit that to $3,000 maximum. But if it is capital loss, like the blue one, you can, the most you can do is 3,000 per year to offset your income. So this one has no limitation. So it's ordinary loss. Then what happened on March 10th, and I will, uh, I bought it back, nothing. So you bought it back. So your market value is $7 you bought it back. So you paid in $7. And let's say this is treated, this is treated as a new transaction you just started in the mark to market world. So you basically, you put in $7. That's your market in. And you're not doing anything yet. So it's just gonna stay there. It is your put in, so it is not your income, it's not your loss, because it's almost like you, you know, it's your investment, right? It is your dollar put in, you're waiting to gain or to lose, right? So let's pretend on um, December 1st of 2021. Notice I didn't use the 31st date, I used the first date, and you sold ABC stock at $20, just like here. You sold for $20. And your ordinary gain would be what? What is your ordinary gain? Your ordinary gain would be the $20 minus what you put in. Remember you put in $7 back in March, right? So your ordinary gain is $13. Assume you did not sell it on December 1st. And on December 31st, 2021, the stock went up to $50 a share. Remember, you did not sell. You were just holding for a better time to sell. So you arrived $50 per share. Regardless, you sell it or not, regardless. And mark to market means to treat this as if you sold. So what is your gain now? You don't have a choice but to wrap up your gain. So it is $50 minus $7. So $43 gain. Now you, I know what you're saying to me. You're like, what? I'm going to pay taxes on the $43? Yes, absolutely. No doubt. 
hundred percent. So that is the taxable income you will pay because the market indicated the stock went up to 50. And I, I tell people that I don't trade stock. Okay, I, I don't really, I'm not a stock trader, um, but I have many clients who are. Did you notice that on December 31st, most of the stock are raising their price? Did you notice that? They are actually going up on price. If you're mark to market, you are raising the market, paying more taxes. But of course, if they drop value, then you got losses, right? So mark to market just means that you have no control. It is marked to market price for you, regardless you sell it or not. Sure, in the process of the year, you buy and sell, buy and sell, buy and sell. So losses, gains are all listed over here. But on the last day of the year, God will decide what you make or what you lose. You have no control. So this is a mark to market. Now, I also know that you're gonna ask me, oh, what happened? Okay, I paid $43 gain. What happened to my stock? Your stock is marked to market. So it will start at 50 on January the 1st of 2022. So you can sell, you can buy, and you can gain and loss and going on, right? So this is where I want you to kind of understand what is wash sales, what is marked to market? I think after you hear me talking right here, right now, you probably are thinking, hmm, Ying, I'm not sure that I should really elect the mark to market. Let me go further to talk about timing. You know, mark to market is all about timing. And I want to mention to you about this. Mark to market is not a election to mark everything you have. You may have five brokerage account, but you can mark to market one. You can mark to market five. You can mark to market just two. You don't have to mark to market all of it. So that mark to market is really for day traders who are trading a lot. And then you, you know, the more you trade, the lesser risk you have on December 31st, 2021, because the whole year fluctuation would ease the drop or the, the rise of stock price on the last day of the year. If you are not a day trader or you're not frequently trading, mark to market is really not something you should look at because you could end up trading couple in the beginning of the year. Then at the end of the year, December 31st come, Everything went up just for that day. And next day it goes down and you don't trade every day. So you don't know the trend. Then you missed out the time to even rack up some losses, right? So it's really a decision. It's a business decision. It's a decision that your accountant probably not going to be capable to make for you. And it is really need you to be educated, understand my blueprints here and the red prints here. And so I would assume now you understand what is wash sales now and what is mark to market, what mark to market means, right? So this was wash sales we were talking about, right? And I showed you how wash sales loss is going into the basis. And this is the mark to market we were talking about and I showed you how the mark to market is actually a place where they, the market will give you the stock price to calculate your gain and loss without you, without you selling it on the last day. Now, then let's talk about this timing because it is rather important. Um, I know my PowerPoint didn't work so I'm just gonna draw more board then. Um, 
So now let's do another time. Uh, I want to clear this one. I want to draw time. So let's say 2022, you want, you have uh, one, two, three, four, five, four creature count. In 2022, and you decided to make these two mark to market. That's what you want to do. 2022, okay, we're in 2022. So your step number one is to file election. And the step one file election, and the election need to be filed with your April 18 tax return. Okay, if you don't file tax return, it will be extension. For 2022 mark to market election, file election with your 2021 1040 extension and taxes. Makes sense, right? Because that's what we're doing right now. We're actually filing this with 2021. And in the letter, in the letter, and you will put in this language. I'm going to read that to you because I don't uh, I don't think you see my PowerPoint. And Kat, can you verify whether it's the PowerPoint showing or it is the board showing right now? It's the whiteboard. Okay, so let me read the language. So under IRC section 475F, the taxpayer, your name and the social security number, elect to use mark to market method of accounting for their trade and business, uh, for their trade or business of trading security. The first year of which the election is effective in the taxable year beginning January the 1st, 2022. And then the following account would be elected mark to market. So you want to give the account number and a specific brokerage firm to IRS. So you may be getting you may be getting 1099 b on the free the three brokerage firm, but this one you're getting 4797 part two for your filing. Okay, so the, the report looks different. And the to revoke, let's say if you did mark to market and you regret not to do it, and it's the same timing, you're gonna do it now to elect, to reverse the election, and with your April 18 taxes, which this taxes is for 2021. All right, so now step number two. So I was talking about filing step number one, the election to IRS. And the step number two is to contact your brokerage firm. Contact your investment company like TD Ameritrade to update your investment account to mark to market. For 22, 22, uh, 2022 election, you want to call in as soon as you know and to get that started, right? But the real time frame, folks, listen to me. The real time frame to have your brokerage firm to change your accounting method is for 2022, for 2022 year, it is from now to April of 2023. Okay, I am saying it. I have a disclaimer right here. The reason I say it, because we I had experience with some other taxpayers filing and they were, um, the brokerage firm allows, a very popular brokerage firms, allow that election, although we filed it right here already, but they allow that election to be filed with a brokerage firm later. So you can do that after December of 2022. You know what that do for you? Maybe you didn't like what you did. Maybe the market price went up so high and you're gonna be paying so much taxes. You just, for, you just regret your MT, MTM. And if that's the case, and you need to revoke, but, and at least you see the price of the stock market on December, right? 
And each brokerage firm will give you different instructions. So some brokerage firm will say, need a copy of your election. And some brokerage firm will say that, well, need your accountant to give us something. They're all different. So whatever they require, you just give to them, then you can become MTM. Remember, if you have all your brokerage, uh, brokerage firm and five account all in there, you want to be so careful to tell them that which one to turn into market to market. Then don't turn the long-term one, right? The long-term investment, you, you have a lower long-term capital gain. Don't turn that into market to market, okay? No need for that. Then you will no longer, after you did the step number two, you will no longer getting 1099B, that long, big report with a column of sale, wash sales disappearing and you know deferred, cannot deduct, all kinds of things. Whatever makes you upset, it will not be there. But they will give you a separate kind of form. I actually have the form here. You know, I will show you when I get through this. And uh, oh, I have it here. Look, this form, MTM becoming this way. See, they give you a form 4797. And then look at how simple it has all become. So sales, cost, losses, or gain. Okay, so this is TD Ameritrade and I just bought, a, bought one out. So you can see how that works, right? Then can you share that again? Yeah. I know it got lost, right? It's good now. So step number three, step number three. We're talking about how to file mark to market, right? So step number three, you're gonna file a form called 3115. And when you file 2022 1040, so that is not due right now, it's due in 2023. So you will do that. And you know, that form 3115 has one section is very, it's not tricky, but it's kind of nerve wracking because they ask you for um, the amount of benefit you received by making this mark to market election. So let's say if you make the market mark, mark to market election, you actually ended up saving $5 million taxes. Then you have to identify that for IRS. Or maybe you overpay, you will pay more taxes. Then you identify to IRS as well. So there is a section called 481A adjustment. That is actually among all of the steps, this 3115 is most challenging. So if you did election, if you got a form 4797, and you are ready to file your taxes for the year, for the first year you have, mark to market election, I would advise you to do that professionally with a CPA firm, just because form 3115. And it is not really possible for me to go through that in the minute with you, and but just want to bring to your attention. So um, actually, um, I have the form right here I'm looking at, but I know you are looking at my whiteboard. Um, Step number four will be filling out form 4797, step number four. So these are the four steps. And these two, these two are in 2023. And you will file these two in 2023. And then this step number two I told you it's going between 2022 and the 2023. But this first step has to be 2022 before April 18. Okay, so this is the mark to market election for year of 2022. So we were here. So step number one, making the election. And this is the language I was talking about and what you write. You can take a picture of that slide. And the folks, if you really need anything, you go onto YouTube, right? It's a video, so you can stop the video and see all the content. 
and the brokerage uh, account update, that's step number two. This is the sample report I was showing. I was talking to you about 4797. After you did mark-to-market -mark election, your report looks like this. It's no longer that 1099B uh, cumbersome look. And the step number three is the is the 3115. This is the one that I was saying you really don't want to handle that yourself. It is more complex than you realize. So uh, in this slide, I was talking about this adjustment piece, and this is the form 3115. If you want to tackle it yourself, I just want to give you one big um, um, tip. And you want to put in 64 right here. If nothing else you do, and then you select others mark to market, then you have a part three where you have to do the calculation. The step number four is the 4797 piece. It is look like this. This is 4797 in your 1040. And it looks, the topic looks really weird, like sales of business properties. It's like, wow, you know, is my stock, what do you mean? That's what I mean. They, they, they treat that as your business property. So you want to use 4797 and come to part two to fill up what you need to fill up. These black one, blacked out ones are just simply the, the things that need to be filled in because I don't want to show you the taxpayer's information. All right. So summary of this election process, it just simply, I want to tell you that you have, I already on that board, I was telling you that you need to do something right now before April 15, 18, right? Then you treat your brokerage account between now and uh, April of next year. But you want to call your brokerage firm, say how, what is the latest time I can do mark to market election? And then they all allow you to do it after December. So um, you can, check with them individually. Know that the brokerage firm are also going through changes. They also know that there is more and more mark to market coming in. So they are develop, developing their procedures as well. So these are you know, moving target and just be responsible for your own account, call them, right? So of course, I just want to briefly touch down the uh, advantage of mark to market. So. This mark to market provides a type of tax loss insurance. So tax loss insurance just means that if you lose a bunch of money and then you can actually offset your income right away instead of just allow $3,000 to offset, right? That's really a lot of it mark to market is related to that. But if we have a, if we have a full market and everything is going up, and the price is going up, market price is going up, and you're in the mood of holding it. You know, December 31st comes, we don't care you, you sold it or not, then your mark to market is gonna give you that day's value. And you better pray that day, the value not gonna be so high that you need to pay a lot of taxes, then 12 o'clock pass, January 1st come, they just drop like in the bottom of the wheel, right? So it's really a, it's gamble. And I, you know, I know there's a lot of people who are trying to make stock market a science. And is there really a science to it? I don't know. And um, if you ask me, my personal experience, there's no science to it. But people make money. And so I think that Warren Buffett make the money. So there has to be something that beyond my comprehension, I just want you to know that mechanically, how mark to market works, mechanically, what wash sales is all about, right? Why people care about wash sales? There are losses that could not take this year. That's why, that's all. And you don't lose it. You just cannot take the loss for this year, all right? What is the disadvantage of mark to market? None of, your, none of your gain will qualify for lower long-term capital gain tax rate, right? Right, okay? So long-term capital gain is lower rate. This is the same still, 20%, the highest rate. What is the highest rate for personal tax return, folks? 37, right? So what is the, what is the rate for corporation tax return? 21. 
So 20% is pretty attractive, wouldn't you say? And then you will be taxed on the ordinary tax rate, my dear. Ordinary tax rate is not capital gain rate. And the loss on long-term capital gain, the trader who deals mainly with 1256 contracts may not want to elect mark to market. So if you deal with contract options and stuff like that, that may not be your cup of tea because you lose, you will lose the 60% long-term capital gain advantage as an investor. And if, you know, so here it says more about the options. And so you cannot take the 60, 40 rules anymore, okay? So make sure that you mark to market with a great thought for your portfolio. So this is long-term capital gain. Short-term capital gain is 37. Um, it's treated as a regular gain. So traders and investors. The difference between investors and traders in simple term is the difference between a hobby and a professional work. You know, a lot of judgments in there. A lot of court cases are happening. And to decide whether you're a hobby or whether you're running a business. So um, trading, for traders, trading is their day job. Did you hear me? So if you are saying that, oh, you know, I trade on different planet. So, you know, at night I trade and during the day I work, good argument. You know, obviously our life is evolving. So our tax rules is evolving as well. And a good example would be home office. Back in the, in the 90s, if you claim home office, the IRS auditors will be in your home checking your home office because it is very rare and it is very regulated and nobody should have a home office deduction when you have a regular income from your employer. Look at today. So many home office, so convenient. Everybody is working from home, COVID. All of that is reshaped our audit guidelines. I'm not talking about the, the tax code or tax rules will change, but it's reshaping the audit guidelines. So the auditors are not so hot with home office anymore because they know that is just very common. Same thing, the trader and the investor, the more internet develops, the more the trading happens 24 seven and the, the lesser, the more blurry between that rule right there in front of you. So does that mean you can just do whatever you want? Well, you can take a tax position. And as long as you are not abusing the tax code, you're taking a position, you disclose your position to IRS, you can do it. If you get audited, you have a position that you're taking. So it is not that you're ruthlessly and um, you know disregard of laws, no. And so I always tell our client that we, we're not here to pay more taxes to IRS but we are here to pay the right amount to IRS because IRS don't offer tips for you and don't offer tips to me either, even though I'm a professional, right? I'm professional tax preparer and IRS didn't tell me that just make everybody pay more taxes, I give you tips. No, IRS tell us that do the right thing and calculate it responsibly, accurately. So what our job is to give you all the knowledge you can have, so you will pay your taxes the right amount. And a lot of our folks, when we don't know the rules and regulations, you think they actually cheated out, made a lot of money out of tax, out of IRS. Trust me, I see more to pay too much to IRS. It's not the other way around. So it's really our time to learn to expand our understanding so we can be smarter with our money, right? And you want to be the 1% of American that knows how to make their money. And every day we have millionaires born in this country. And the youngest millionaire, and I checked online, was only seven years old, made more than a million on his own, is an Indian boy. 
So we're talking about different time, different money, and the day trading, stock market is just so fashionable. Cryptocurrency is just so there. So you want to be known for those inventions, but you want to understand how tax evolves around them. That's why you are here with me, right? So are you a trader and investor? So I have a couple of points here. Sporadical versus frequent. That's really important. And then the average length of trading fewer than 31 days. That means you're supposed to have a lot of wash sales in order to you to qualify for day trader. And to know that you don't have to be a day trader under your social security number and your name. You can form a company for that. Then you don't have to end your year on December 31st. You can end your year some, some other month, right? So those are all considerations of being tax smart and flexible and then know what you're doing. Tax grades for traders. And so these are business expenses, capital gain and losses that become um, regular income on the regular gain. So these are all the slices I am trying to cover and the benefit to be a trader really I mean, if you are a professional day trader, you set up a company and you 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 know you make your own office and you you got your own computer. Those are business uh, expense. So those will allow you to deduct those expenses as a part of business expense. So what if you say that? Well, you know, I run a company, but I also this company we do we do one thing. We teach classes at the same time we do investment. So you can make that account mark to market and to run that business together with this mark-to-market um, -market business you have on the trading floor, right? So those are um, modern business ideas and the young people has nowadays. All right, so my last slide is about information. We do open Monday to Saturday. This is one of the big difference our firm has, and you can call us on Saturday between 8.30, 5.30, we're working. Okay. And at the same time, we're also online. So we have a lot of people, uh, we have a lot of clients all over the country. So we really do have the pause of the business community. We actually know what issue are really kind of hot among people. So the reason we did another mark to market is because this is a very hot question from all kinds of places and by all kinds of professional people. And, um, you know, to really get you there, I felt like the examples I was giving you, the drawing board I have, and if you just go on YouTube, actually um, go on the video, just watch that piece again and again until you understand, because that is really important for you to come to that place in order you to realize whether your election or whether your intention to elect is valid or not, okay? I hope you got something great today and I will end my webinar right here again. So I think we're good for today and I will see you again um, Tuesday. Bye-bye.